For 162 years, the basic principles of sailing in the America's Cup remained the same. One person would steer the boat, the rest of the crew would handle the sails. And then came foiling. In no time, it was clear that this changed everything. Because overnight, sailing a modern cut boat became the ultimate balancing act. And no one found it easy. But now, a decade later and three cup cycles down the line, foiling is where it's at. With thousands of hours under their belts, crews have got very good at it and the knowledge is spreading. But how? As well as being a required part of this cup cycle, the AC40 is helping to accelerate the learning, both inside the cup and in the broader Grand Prix sailing world. In the previous episode, Emirates Team New Zealand coach and sailor Ray Davies outlined what makes this boat tick. This time, he explains in more detail how crews handle these sophisticated flying machines. We also talked to foiling expert and class manager Luca Rizzotti about why the AC40 is an important boat outside the America's Cup. Plus, I get to have a go. Stroking your tummy and patting your head at the same time. We've all tried it with varying degrees of success. But when foiling arrived in the America's Cup scene, it was much the same thing for the crews. Learning how to balance a high performance boat that's traveling at a pace that will get you a speeding ticket ashore while still maintaining control is not easy. But under the skin, the AC40 is a very advanced boat that has helped crews get up to speed quickly. Ray Davies explains how. How much can you sail this boat through feel? I mean, yes, you've got the numbers there, but how long does it take before you can actually oh, feel? Really. For anyone who sails this, they're obviously a sailor anyway, so they can look at the water and tell which way the wind's coming from, and looking at the waves. And that, you know, like just for sailing the boat and the feel, obviously you feel the wind's pretty much always coming from, from about yeah, yeah. 18 <laughs> degrees, whether you're upwind or downwind. But you can just see, you can tell if you're going upwind or, or not. You can tell how close to the wind. You've got your jib, the woolies are right there. So you're looking at all the normal things you, would be your normal cues. Um, basically, very, very easy. You're just looking at the two woolies and then deciding where you want to go, you know, up, upwind, downwind, bearing away. And yeah, there's sort of a bit of a power band as you bear away and you don't want to get committed into some reaching angles. It's much easier to be upwind or downwind. Um, so yeah, you pick those angles and then, yeah, of course we can reach and do all of that, but it's just a, a little bit more trim, challenging for the trimmers, but um, that's absolutely fine too. So you just, yeah, rip around point wherever you want. Very, very important is the communication between the four. So you've got your helmet on, headset, communication, you sort of shut down all the other noise around and just having a chat. So the dialogue is important from the trimmers to sort of say how much power they got and um, you know if you can sail deeper downwind or not or I'm on the edge no lower than this. Um, you, you feel it pretty quickly if, you, if you're sailing too low and you run out of power obviously you know start leaning to windward and then it's the natural thing to turn up and hook up that power. If you turn up too far, well then the main sheet trimmer is easing the traveller down, then you'll see it on your bar graph, he'll say, look, you know, you can go deeper if you want. So it becomes really, really natural, really quick. That, that angle of heel is, is your cue, and um, yeah, the trimmer just, just helps to talk about where he's at with his power settings. And so downwind, so downwind it is the same as a high performance boat, and yep. gust hits you, you'll tend to bear off a little yeah. bit if yeah 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 absolutely yeah you peel off and get carted right. off downwind and and um yeah pretty much all the gusts are all downwind of you you're leaving everything behind <laughs> <laughs> it's all i history. would imagine the big difference is that what i notice on the multi hills the big difference is that when you do get hit by a gust yeah the boat accelerates so much faster when yeah. you're on foils than when you're actually in displacement mode 
that actually you don't end up bearing off that much because you're generating more, because you're going faster, you generate more lift from the foils yep. and you get more stability. I guess that's the same with this, is it? No, 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 it's exactly the same. You just generate more speed. There's this, the old saying, never chase a dying breeze. Well, that's not the case anymore. We can chase a dying breeze and catch up to it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's certainly very, it's absolutely fascinating. It's really quite snug. It's, um, actually, you know, in that nose dive that you guys did yeah. a little while yeah. ago, that looked pretty dramatic. Do you have, I mean, what's to stop you being thrown forward in no, there? You, holding onto the you know, you're holding on, you have a good feel, like it's really sturdy. So you're holding onto that and, you know, it's, you just embrace your, your feet can yeah. be touched in big, the front of the cockpit. Yeah. It, it's compared to any other boat, you know, you're locked in. But what does all this mean for the future? Luca Rosotti is an expert on foiling. As well as being the founder of the Foiling Week in Lake Garda, he's closely involved in many other aspects of foiling, which made him the perfect choice as class manager for the AC40. So, aside from the America's Cup, where does he think this is all heading? How big a deal is the AC40? Where does that sit? Is this a leading edge piece of technology? Uh, what is unique is uh, the one design thing. Uh, it's a completely new proposition. Uh, never before a boat that was made for the cup has been made available for the outside public with the intention of running uh, races uh, and to form a class. Of course, there was in the past uh, other, um, let's say, um, boats that were used for the America's Cup World Series, like the catamarans before the AC-45. But there was never, back then, the intention of using them in an organized way. So that's what's new, is that there is a, an organization now behind it that wants to help uh, the class to grow uh, by adding uh, new things. The flight control system is so honed and working well, that's what I hear from everyone stepping on the boat. That is the best flight control they have ever experienced. Um, this makes it uh, usable by a wider uh, public compared to the type of boats that were available in the past. And this certainly had made uh, an impact on the siding uh, that was possible to bring this boat to make a circuit that is uh, open to owner drivers and other things. So, for example, one thing that we will do as a class is uh, uh, for the new teams that are coming to compete, we will set, uh, uh, let's say, minimum uh, hours that they need to have on a simulator before they can participate uh, uh, on the race course uh, with the others. And of course, we will facilitate the use of uh, the simulator that Team New Zealand has developed. And this is one of those simulators. Luca, this is what you were talking about, isn't it? Yes, Matt, it's exactly one of those. It's uh, one of the simulators that uh, Emirates Team New Zealand uses for training the crew. It has the capacity of uh, four people on board, exactly the same as an AC40. So two helms people, two, helms, two trimmers. Two trimmers on the back. Uh, the, the simulator has the full capacity to also go online and do match racing with another simulator. And uh, all the teams that are in the Cup and the Youth America's Cup are using uh, the simulator uh, as we speak. And they've been using it for some time, haven't they, from what I hear? And I think uh, the first ones were delivered uh, four or five months ago. So there's already been quite some time. We have here at uh, Matt's Trade, uh, some of the guys from uh, Dutch Sail, of course, being local, they come and help us uh, doing the uh, using the simulator with uh, the visitors. But uh, so far, it's been good, and I think uh, um, it is uh, in a it's in a mode that is easy for the visitors to use, less complicated, uh, of course, than uh, the full-on race simulator. But it's the capacity is there. How much time does this take out of having to do it on the water? Do you think? Well. Going in the water is always the best way, uh, but uh, it is possible to train very well with the simulators. The aviation industry is telling us that you can certify an airline pilot 
by using a simulator. Do you think this is the way it's going to go forward in other areas of foiling? I mean, it's obviously a very expensive device to, well, to create. Well, it is, uh, let's say, Grombok, which is Santo Zero, which is the developer of this uh, uh, simulation tool, can certainly develop similar tools for even for smaller boats. I would say it is quite possible that uh, in the future we will see these kind of simulators in Olympic classes. Like any computer game, concentration is the key to success. And while the steering wheels have feedback that replicate the feel of the rudder, the physical sensation of the ride for the crew is still missing. In some ways, this makes it harder and means focusing on the numbers is even more important. The target is 45. Okay. 58. Okay, coming up. On target. Speed on target. Oh, I could have squeezed around there, couldn't I? Okay. Because wherever they may have come from I in the sailing will. world, handling an AC40 is a very different experience. Oh, and one where getting your head in tune with a fast-moving set of numbers is Very crucial. Nice. Pressure to the left. <laughs> That's right. Fine. I mean, I call that a success. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it a nice. It was a nice ride. Yeah, I think. Thank it you. I don't understand why they don't want to hire us. <laughs> the coach. But for all the sophistication and simulation that is allowing teams to get to grips with this new way of sailing, sometimes things don't go according to plan. Capsizing is a relatively new thing in the America's Cup, but it has also become quite commonplace. Because these boats don't have any keels, they need their foils to keep them upright, and that means going quickly. Just as it gets harder to balance on a bicycle the slower you ride, the same is true of a modern America's Cup boat. So, after more than 170 years of technical development, the risk of going for an unexpected swim in the America's Cup has become a reality. A sustainable future. Yammar.